Hello once again and welcome back to this course in ABE 153 and in this video this will be our last topic for this course in this semester but even though this is our last topic um, I just want you to know that there are still many machine elements that we haven't discussed uh, such as the linkages the cams and as well as the clutches and the brakes uh, mechanical springs the power screws and there are still many Okay, so even though we haven't or we can't discuss those uh, just simply because we didn't have much time, uh, but the machine elements that we have discussed, I guess, it's um, it's already um, sufficient or enough for us to start, um, to start designing processing equipment or production machineries because those machine elements that we have, um, that we have discussed, they are... They are pretty. Um, they are. Um, they are common, or they they can be usually be found in many uh, production machineries and and also processing equipment. Okay, so if you notice that um, we started with the discussion with um, uh, with the V belt drives, and then uh, it was followed by the flat belt drives then the chain is brackets and then the gears so those machine elements uh, they are considered as they are considered as power transmission elements so they have advantages they have disadvantages as well and then those those machine elements they are connected to a shaft right so that was our previous topic um, regarding the the shaft shaft and shaft components so in the shaft there are, there's also keys uh, there are also splines there are also shaft couplings and the and the shaft it's actually being supported by another machine element and that machine element that supports this uh, that supports the shaft is the uh, is these bearings Okay, so in terms of structural analysis, uh, we can say that um, that bearing is just simply a support. Uh, it's a support that that allows rotation for the shaft because, uh, as we as we have discussed or as we know in basic mechanics or strength of material course, that a shaft is a sh is a structural element or a machine element that uh, transmit torque and power or motion. So in order to transmit that uh, that power, it needs to be rotated. Um, also, uh, I mean rotated at some RPM, and also it must have some torque. Now, if it is to be rotated, uh, then somehow there must be some support that will allow rotations, but it doesn't allow uh, movements in, let's say, X, Y, Z. Okay, so only rotation. So that's the uh, that's the function of the of the bearings okay so again in terms of structural um, structural analysis we can say that it's a support but in terms of machine elements uh, there's actually a lot um, uh, there's actually uh, a lot of details regarding it and it deserves to be uh, to be a separate machine element okay and that's what we are going to discuss uh, in this video so right here I have here a um, different types uh, actually some just some few types of the bearings so right here here's the ball bearing um, it's a single row deep roof ball bearing and the balls I mean the rolling element is is actually inside so we cannot um, we cannot see it and right here here's what we call the um, tapered bearings so instead of having a um, a sphere like or a ball like shape of rollers here, this one has this cylindrical shape of the rollers and also it has this tapered shape so this is what we call as a tapered tapered roller bearing Okay, and we also have here another type of bearing. Uh, this is what we call a uh, thrust bearing. It's just simply because the loading. And by the way, here's the the rolling element. This is the balls. Um, so this 
we call this a thrust bearing cell simply because of the direction of the loading so it cannot support loads coming from the from the uh, radial direction so this one only supports actual direction okay and when we say actual direction it's just along the shaft axis okay and some bearings uh, like this one it, this can only support uh, radial bearings I mean the radial loadings uh, and some some amount of thrust or actual loadings and we'll discuss that in detail uh, later but for now I'm just giving you an overview of the um, um, I mean of these bearings okay so th another um, or you might also notice that some bearings uh, they have this uh, housings like uh, they come in in different types like this one is a flange type housing so it's square and it has a four bolt holes and the bearing is just right here okay another one is this uh, pillow block bearing so another type of housings but the bearing is just simply this and you would notice this one for the uh, for the lubrication okay so now let's start the technical discussions regarding this bearings okay so now for the introduction um, although we had an introduction already uh, what I mean by this introduction is introduction in our lecture handouts so the purpose of the bearing is to support a load while permitting relative motion between two elements of a machine and the bearings actually um, there are two types of bearings uh, in the sense that um, in terms of how they uh, they allow this relative motion so we have here bearings that's just um, sliding contact sliding contact bearings or um, we call it as sometimes referred to as journal bearings so these are bearings without any um, without any rolling elements so but what we are going to discuss here is the type of bearings that has um, that has rolling elements so another type is a, a rolling contact okay rolling contact bearings or sometimes referred to as anti-friction bearings uh, if you check our if you check our bias I think this is bias 309 okay I'm, I'm not sure about it but, uh, we'll check that later if it's 309 I think 2001 and sometimes it's just simply referred to as roller bearings but uh, this is not precise because um, there are rollers that's uh, that's that's ball shape and uh, there are rollers that uh, that are cylindrical shapes and other types are having tapered tapered shapes uh, I mean in terms of the roll in terms of the rollers and spherical shapes or bottle like shapes so there are a lot uh, types of shapes so um, I think uh, the more precise term is this one rolling conduct bearings because it um, it can be either um, roller I mean this cylindrical roller sometimes referred to as just simply roller and this one is ball bearings so it also has this rolling uh, I mean the rolling element Okay, and when we say anti-friction, um, sometimes this is a misnomer because um, although it's anti-friction, there there is also a lot of frictions going on inside, uh, just simply because there are contacting surfaces, and uh, that's why we need lubrication as well. So, anyway, it's just about terms. Now let's talk about some applications of these bearings in in our field so if you notice here in our figure uh, figure 14-2a so we, we have here bearings installed in the actual fans so here's the, f the fan impeller and 
uh, it's being rotated by let's say an electric motor or uh, or an internal combustion engine and this impeller is being uh, supported by the shaft and the shaft is being supported by these bearings so there are two bearings uh, actually supporting it so one here in front and another uh, another bearing at the back okay so that allows rotation of this um, of this fan okay another uh, application is is in this hammer mill um, hammer mill hammer mill equipment or size reduction equipment where in the shaft uh, equipped with paddles or hammers um, it's being supported by these bearings and another one is is this type of bearing um, right here used in the boot leg of the bucket elevator okay so we have here another another type of housing and this is what we call the take up unit bearing um, I mean take up unit because uh, it adjusts the tension so right here in the shaft what's connected right here is the is the pulley of the um, bucket elevator right so that's that's it okay so now let's talk about the nomenclature of the bearings so basically it's just the different parts so right here uh, what is shown is a ball bearing because we have a rolling element that's ball shape and this rolling element it can be either a ball shape or cylindrical shape or simply just called rollers Okay, so these rollers they actually slide um, between this inner ring so right here let's say here it is so we have here the inner ring so here's the inner ring here's our roller and here's our outer ring okay so that's it we have inner ring the outer ring and the rolling elements so it can be balls or it can be uh, cylindrical shape rollers and there's also a retainer so right here there is a retainer or a cage sometimes it's, uh, like this so this one is a cage so it just maintains the um, distances between the rollers so you see that's the uh, basic basic parts of the bearings and you will also see uh, or you will also encounter the term like um, bearing face okay? and when we say bearing face that refers to this um, to this face right here this one and when we say the bore diameter or inner diameter okay so again the bore size this is it this is the bore so that's where the shaft is being fit into and we say outer diameter that's the outermost part uh, I mean that's the diameter of the outermost circle and we say the width this is it this is the width okay and when we, when we say um, inner race or outer race uh, there is actually a groove here in the inner ring there is a groove or in this rolling element um, slides or rolls so that groove right here that's what we call the inner inner race if it's in the inner ring and if it's in the outer ring then that's going to be the uh, outer race okay so now let's talk about the classification of bearings so here we are we are in this rolling contact bearings and this is farther classified as in terms of okay so number one in terms of um, of rolling elements okay so that's one in terms of rolling elements and we can have here the ball um, or we can just refer this refer to it as ball bearings and here we have the roller bearings okay so that's why right here when we say uh, roller bearings right here sometimes this refers to the uh, to the rollers like the cylinder cylindrical uh, rollers um, tapered rollers 
and also the barrel shape barrel shape okay so if we draw this here's the cylinder and the tapered is uh, it has this tapered uh, tapered shape and the bottle shape is like this okay so this is what we consider uh, what we consider as a roller bearings okay and um, there is actually um, or if we ask the question uh, how do we know which which bearing uh, do we need if we have these loads and we have this speed so um, that depends upon the um, actually we can have a qualitative um, a qualitative uh, selection like if you notice right here so let's draw a a ball or let's just use our electro handouts so we have here so here we have a ball that um, that's sitting uh, sitting on a internal internal raceway and here we have a rolling uh, I mean a roller element cylindrical roller so if we apply a load a vertical load or a radial load okay and you, you will see that for a ball bearings then we have a point contact so the 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 contact between this raceway and uh, and the poles uh, it's a point contact whereas for a roller bearing it's a line contact and um, the difference is that or in terms of application we can uh, we can interpret it as since we have this uh, point contact then that means that we can have um, we can have a faster application so if we have high speed applications then um, this must be um, this must be the candidate however in terms of capacity of loadings uh, because it's it's just a point contact then uh, it cannot be able to accommodate much load as compared to this to this roller bearing because uh, if you have a small area then uh, that induces high stress but if you have a larger area larger contact area then that means that you have uh, less stress and that's why for ball bearings um, we we say that it's for uh, faster speed right faster speed but low loads okay so simply because of this point and for 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 a roller bearing uh, since it has this line contact then it can accommodate higher loads so let's write it here, here high loads but low uh, low speed okay so that's it then the next classification uh, is in terms of the load direction okay so right let's write it here the next classification is in terms of the load direction and this can be uh, we can classify it as radial bearings uh, radial let's just write here radial bearings or thrust bearings or uh, sometimes referred to as axial actual bearings and what else so we can have a um, in terms of loading combined radial and thrust okay so if in terms of figure uh, if here's our shaft and here's our shaft axis and here's our uh, bearings then when we say radial um, that means that it's a load or it's a direction that's passing through the center so from this um, from this uh, circumference then it will pass through the center so it doesn't matter whether it's here or here or even right here that doesn't matter as long as it passes through the center then that's what we call as radial and the actual is perpendicular this is perpendicular or uh, sorry parallel to the to the shaft axis okay so if here's our bearing um, and here's our shaft right here this is the shaft axis now the the radial the radial direction is this one 
Alright. So here's the radial direction, or right here, or right here. And when you say actual direction, it's right here. So it's perpendicular to the face but along the shaft axis. And we can have bearings that uh, that can accommodate um, that can accommodate actually combined actual uh, combined actual loads and radial loads. Okay, like this one. Okay, so, so here's an example. Okay, there are bearings that are um, that that's only designed for actual, like this one, and this one is designed for radial. And here, another example is. A bearing that's designed for uh, or that that has some capacity on both actual and um, actual and actual and radial okay and what else now let's discuss the different types of bearings as specified in our past 309 uh, 2000 now if you check that one uh, what we'll see is this so in our lecture handouts actually this figure is just taken from bias 309 so here's the single row the maximum capacity um, you have internal self-aligning we have the angular contact uh, we have the ball thrust bearings but you would notice here these are just ball bearings meaning that the um, that the rolling element is a ball whereas another class is you know, a bearing wherein the rolling element is a roller or a uh, cylindrical roller or a uh, tapered roller or whatever or a spherical roller so that's the distinction okay so if you notice there are actually many types of bearings and there may or oh, I mean in an in actual practice uh, you might you might encounter other types of bearings as well so uh, just don't be surprised and because right here what we'll discuss is uh, the ones specified in our in our pass now in table 14-1 uh, I've included the comparison of, of the bearing types in terms of the radial load capacity the thrust load capacity and misalignment um, capability so these different types we will discuss that in detail um, later but you can see an overview uh, overview picture of uh, of their characteristics so anyway you can if you understood the um, difference between the the ball the ball bearings and then the roller bearings in terms of their contact contact area then you can actually um, and also the classification of the radial loads and the um, actual loads or thrust loads Okay, so thrust loads or actual then you can actually uh, have have an idea of uh, which bearing to to choose in your applications okay so first is let's talk about this single row uh, radial bearing so this bearing is also referred to as deep groove or conrad bearing and it is used prim primarily for radial load application however it can also accommodate some thrust loads so here's an example of this uh, single row so that means that the roller is right here so the row of uh, of the ball of the i mean of the rolling element is just uh, single so right here in our figure 14-9 so if we cut a section it looks like this so here's our inner race and here's our rolling element Okay, so it's just single row when we say double row then that means that we have two rows of this rolling um, element and another type is a internal self-aligning uh, self-aligning I mean it has some capability for some degree of misalignments however I just take note that the self-aligning feature uh, relates to the misalignments capacity of the bearings of around plus minus four degrees however it should not be abused as excessive misalignment uh, because of course that can lead to early failure of the bearing so it's just simply because uh, how it can accommodate the misalignment is just simply because of the geometry of this uh, outer race and then these um, these rolling elements and by the way 
uh, for a double row, um, you might think that you can have a s two pieces of single row bearings. But the characteristics of the double row is simply because of this additional row, then you can actually increase the capacity or the radial capacity of the bearings. However, in terms of the uh, construction, the dimension of this is it says here that it's about 60 to 80 percent wider than a comparable single row um, bearing. So it's not that um, you can make this as I mean you can uh, you can put side by side two single rows, but if you just order a double row bearing, then you can uh, have lesser width right here. Okay, another one is this uh, angular contact bearings. So um, if we zoom in the shape of the rolling elements, you, you would see here that it's not um, it's not a typical typical uh, race or typical outer ring uh, outer race and inner race because right here because of this configuration then it allows some uh, some some thrust loads uh, it, I mean it allows some uh, yes I mean <laughs> thrust loads uh, compared to the uh, typical radial bearings that we have okay so right here here's the comparison um, if here's our radial bearing or our, or our typical um, single row or deep roof ball bearings then let's say here's our uh, our contact angle now if we have this geometry then we can actually increase this um, this angle of contact okay so the uh, angle of contact basically if we have a load that's going on uh, I mean that that's um, that's that's passing through this um, this actual direction then here's gonna be the the um, resisting direction okay so um, angular contact bearings it can have um, uh, I mean it can have a higher capacity for uh, combined thrust and uh, radial loadings okay and the next is here so right here in the figure 14 14-11 uh, so we can have arrangement for this angular contact bearing so you can have or we can use it as a single bearing or we can use it uh, I mean you can use it uh, in in this configuration um, referred to as tandem con configuration or back-to-back -back or face-to-face -face. and the difference is just simply because if you see this uh, this uh, this contact angle so tandem because both both direction I mean it has an increased capacity for um, for this direction only I mean for this thrust uh, thrust loadings but for back to back then it has this capacity in uh, in this direction and on on the other direction okay so just like this face to face so you just uh, I mean there's also difference in terms of the magnitude of this capacity. Okay, another type is this split type ball bearing and what else the ball thrust bearings here's an example of the ball thrust bearing okay so here's the uh, let's say inner rays or I don't know if you can see it outer rays and here's the rolling element Okay, so it's for thrust loading, but the rolling element is a ball. Okay, this one, as I've said, you can't actually, I mean, we can't actually see the, the rolling element because it's enclosed with, uh, with cages or retainer rings, and also it has some grease right here. Okay, now um, the next the next bearing or the next bearing is the um, roller bearings. So I think I don't have much time um, in this video, so we'll continue our discussion in the next video.